We have uh, Dr. Blaine Neer, uh, who is on the call, uh, who will preface uh, this discussion. Uh, Dr. Muir. Okay. Uh, well, good morning. Thanks for having me. First of all, I know everyone on the board and has been glued to the TV and to the news press, uh, to their to computer, and they see what's going on around the world. And then, of course, looking at our major epicenters from coast to coast. Uh, and uh, let me just tell you, first and foremost, that we are no different than them. We're just a we're just a microcosm of what's going on there. And we're uh, we're on any day now. We could have a an upclick in major cases that could overwhelm our hospital and put us in a major situation. And in saying that, uh, we're there now. And the reason I say that is this this uh, disease. Of course, you also have read read and understand that New Orleans, which is not very far away, and many of us are there often and have been there since Mardi Gras, uh, is is the new epicenter. And it's uh, and unfortunately, colleagues I have there uh, describe it as a war zone. Uh, the main thing that's going on everywhere, and you all are all aware with the term PPE now, which is personal protective equipment. That's the sort of the tip of the iceberg uh, in our locally. You know, I, uh, let me just say this: I I uh, I run both my internal medicine clinic with my partners, and as well as we run our uh, the Natchez After Hours clinic. We've we've made a decision just a, a few weeks ago that that was going to be our main. Uh, when we decided we were going to be a, a, a sort of a testing uh, a, a testing clinic and provide that testing here, uh, we we got our, our uh, got our our act together downstairs and we made sure that our our ability to perform the test, protecting our employees and protecting our nurse practitioners and protecting the public, was set in place, and that's what we've been testing. Uh, if you look at the state. This is a state uh, uh, website today, and you look at the numbers in Adams County, you will be fooled. It says it says two cases. Well, first of all, let me tell you, that's wrong. And we figured out why it's wrong after many calls. Uh, but right now, the just to let you know where we are right now, I had two positive cases yesterday that were uh, relayed to me. I still have about 40 tests I'm waiting on from the, just the clinic alone. The hospital is is waiting on several themselves. We have three patients confirmed on ventilators in our hospital. So you can do the math. The two on the site are wrong. We we found out that some of the labs that we have been referring to initially that were rec uh, recommended to us are overwhelmed and they're not they're actually not reporting positive tests. So you, you can see right now you can triple at least triple the cases we know of as of this morning than what's on the site. And I'm just going to tell you right now, there are several hundred cases in this town. You know, you know, the, you know, the mad 95 percent of folks that get are exposed to this and become positive are not going to be hospitalized. A good majority of those folks that are younger folks, healthier folks may not have any symptoms or they'll be they'll just think it's uh, they may just think it's a low grade fever or just a uh, seasonal allergies, which is obviously complicating symptoms right now. Uh, but the five percent is all it takes to overwhelm our hospital, and we have every bed that's been allocated with special conditions, reverse isolation rooms to try to protect the uh, the environment of the room and protect our staff. Every one of those beds is full with someone of high suspicion for COVID-19. Several of them with significant breathing difficulties. That, uh, by the way, you can go from, and I know you've seen, you've heard the anecdotal stories. It's happened in our hospital. In the last few days, somebody one day before uh, that I'll, I'll I may be taking care of or another doctor in town taking care of that maybe home we have isolated, maybe just has a fever, has no shortness of breath at all. Uh, six hours later, then they're, they're in the emergency room getting intubated. This is how fast this thing turns on our folks. It's uh, especially if they're in the middle of their infection time. Uh, day eight or so is the sort of the, the, the time of, of, of symptoms. But the uh, that's the problem. Once they get on a vent, as you guys are hearing, these patients are sick, sick, sick. They require the highest level of the ventilation. And these people are not getting off the vent. It, even if they're going to survive, they're going to be on the ventilators for up to two weeks. So that ventilator is taken. Uh, our hospital has limited ventilators, just like across the country. And uh, if we get an uptick in more cases, and unfortunately, the healthy folks in this town that are walking around with it unknowingly 
if they get comfortable, if we say to them, okay, we're not, don't have that many cases, we must be immune in matches, and we start going about any normalcy of, uh, and getting out and about, this thing is going to have a huge upsurge. And unfortunately, the folks that are 50 and above have com comorbid conditions that put them at greater risk for immune compromise are going to come in the hospital. They're going to get they're going to get extremely sick, and many and, and and certainly the numbers bear out. On average, for every hundred people that get exposed and get COVID, five five of those people are going to be hospitalized, and about a third to half of those people are going to be on a vent, and then that, that then all bets are off. Then, so we're right there. We have not even come close to a peak here in Natchez. There, uh, if you look at all the models, we're looking at three or four weeks down the road for for that to happen across Mississippi. Maybe ours could be uh, a, a much closer to that, two or three weeks possibly, but we're just guessing. It's all about what we do. And I and the mayor knows I've been preaching it. Doctors in town have been preaching it. I've talked to the our, our doctors that are in the, in the ICU are you know working night and day. Here's the other problem. You hear about PPEs that I just mentioned. You know the CEO and I talked this morning. Uh, uh, we were the the, uh, the PPA the PPA uh, I'm sorry the PPE situation in the hospital is if we ask today we're okay. That means gloves, masks, gowns, all the protective gear to protect our employees is are okay right now. We're okay right now, but we don't know if we get an up click in cases in the next two three weeks. The problem is is the is much as they're saying they're producing. That you can see with all these all these cities around the country, they need more and more and more. And and I guess you guys understand, Natchez isn't a pro, is going, isn't going to be on the priority list. Uh, and uh, and then the other thing that people don't think about is we're these people that are being intubated and people we're having to treat. We're we're now starting to run low on medications. So it's medications you don't think about, sedation medicines that we need to keep these patients on the vent and comfortable. They're eating this product up, and now now it's become a national shortage on on that line. Uh, you, I know you heard you hear about all these medicines we're anecdotally trying trying to treat folks with, the hydroxychloroquine, the the Z packs, and all these products that are for other uses. Well, those are getting eaten up across the country because people are are panicking and people are scared, and certainly it's a try anything moment with this disease since we don't have a, a cure, we don't have a vaccine. So all of these layers of concern we have, inpatient and outpatient are telling us right now that the only way to continue to confine this and slow the spread of this is to keep having local restraints on 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 uh, contact. This thing isn't just passing around because you walk in front of a cough. The majority of people that are coming down with this unknowingly are t contacting services, uh, and I fear, at places, in, you know, certainly two weeks ago, it was at restaurants. It was at bars. It was in public. It was if you got contacted and you touched somebody else, if you're not cleaning hands and cleaning surfaces, you know, you guys are red, how long it lives on plastic and on metal it, and, and others, uh, on, even on cardboard, it can live for hours, days. And we have to continue the process of hygiene and, and social distancing. I would say that any, uh, I'm now following what the CDC is recommending, what the government recommending. I would say that right now, certainly all all venues that are at risk for gatherings of more than ten people, and certainly are have uh, ventilation risks and 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 contact risks, uh, certainly should be managed and closed. A park or a uh, an open space where social distancing can be practiced is certainly not something that I would put on my priority list uh, for closure necessarily. It's just if it's easy access. I mean, across the country, even in New York. They're allowing people to walk through Central Park. It's just that uh, they uh, to get their exercise, but uh, but they are certainly uh, strongly re and, re and strictly enforcing social distancing, and certainly any any businesses that require contact and close quarters or gatherings. A basketball game is probably one of the worst things. Worst things. I love basketball, I, I, but uh, there's no way anybody should be on a basketball court right now, sweating, sweating on each other, bumping into each other. That's a that's a complete, absolute no no. I don't care if the numbers are ten or less. It, 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 uh, if last time I uh, uh, checked, you have to have ten people to play a game. So uh, no, I mean unless you're playing three on three. But that's just that's just read between the lines. Absolutely, that's a contact. That's a, that's a passing. That's passing, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, 
body bodily uh, li- uh, surfaces and liquids to each other. That that's that certainly should be a no no. I certainly a go- an individual golf game. If you're practicing di- social distancing and you're uh, sanitizing your clubs, you're not going into the clubhouse touching all over counters and shaking hands and and everything like that. I think that that's you know again it's all how we handle that. But that certainly would be something that. I would think would be would be very acceptable for you to get out into nature, be away from everybody, and if you want to if you want to punish yourself hitting that little white ball. But I just want to you know, I just want to make sure everybody continues to preach this word and, and 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 understand understand the significance of it. I know you all are are doing your jobs because you you want the best for this community and and uh, and certainly my my doctors are uh, I'm, I'm representing my doctors here my. My daughter's in the hospital. My daughter's on the front line. My nurse practitioners, my, and all my nurses. Uh, they, uh, they. Are, if, 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 if you see how they're working across the, across and you know, and, and working their butts off on TV, I promise you, they're working as hard or harder here for, for our patients here. And and so please support them. I, just the last thing I want to say is is you know because of that, uh, we continue to talk to whoever you know you can talk to to support our our CEO and our hospital as well in terms of making sure that we get the medicines we need to take care of those patients. You know, when we all go to the grocery store now, I mean, I'm sure you guys are thinking about everything they're touching and realizing that this, uh, this, this, this virus could be on any surface. The main, the main issue with gloves is that certainly uh, it would be ideal if a checkout person were changing gloves for each individual checkout person uh, and cleaning the uh, conveyor. I will tell you, uh, that I, when I go to the grocery store, uh, I don't even put my, my food on the conveyor. I, I, I actually reach over and, and pass it, pass it through myself. But we, uh, the main thing is that it, the, the main thing for sure is that we I would encourage the for, for that checkout person to clean their hands thoroughly between clients, and if they were wearing gloves. They should change them between clients. It certainly doesn't help to wear, just have gloves on just for the sake of having gloves. But for for you checking out, for you checking out, once you put your stuff through there and got to get them in bags, make sure the main issue is that your hands need to be sanitized immediately, and make sure that when you put when you put those bags in your car and you get home, and, and you should probably unload that that those that uh, uh, the, the, that food cautiously. Clean every part of it. Don't let those bags in the house. Throw those bags away immediately. Uh, really just have to practice incredible hand hygiene when you're out picking things up at the store. So thank you all for having me. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Muir for coming on this morning because they are extremely busy uh, because of this pandemic. And I, as mayor, on behalf of the Board of Aldermen and the citizens, I just want to say thank you to all of the medical practitioners that are out there working, even down to the custodial staff that are constantly sanitizing our medical facilities. I mean, these are our first responders on this pandemic. They're out there risking themselves, family, their, their families at risk. So I would like to uh, thank Dr. Mir, and I strongly urge this board, please, Whatever we do, please let's not dilute our resolutions that we adopted for this city. This pandemic is serious, and we are trying to reduce the spread. We're we're trying to prevent a spike from occurring in our little community. So I implore the board, please, please, let's keep this as rigid as possible so that people can know the seriousness of this disease.